water, earth, fire, air, more earth. In this tutorial, we're going to see how to become earthbenders in Blender. Now, you guys can't tell me that after seeing Avatar The Last Airbender, the TV show, by the way, not the movie, that you didn't want to be earthbenders or any kind of element bender. Now, we already saw how to do water bending. In this tutorial, we're going to see how to achieve these four different earth bending effects. It's going to be a lot of fun, and we're going to learn some cool skills and tricks. So with that, let's go ahead and go in a new Blender scene, delete the default cube, add in a plane, scale it up with the S key, and bring it up above. Hit Shift A, add in an Icosphere, put the subdivisions to 1, and then bring it back on the Y axis like so. Now we're going to add a modifier, subdivision surface, and apply that. Shade it smooth by right clicking. Go into edit mode with proportional editing on the O key. Go ahead and grab the vertices and give it some kind of shape. Boom, there we go, we got a rock. Now in the physics tab, add a rigid body. We're gonna make it active with a plain rigid body and make it a passive. And if we play it, look at that, we got earth bending. But it's just a rock, so it's not really exciting. What we're gonna do now is copy that rock, shift D, go into edit mode, give it some other kind of random shape and do it one more time for good luck. And now we have three rocks earth bending. How cool is that? Now we're gonna go the now we gotta mess around with the gravity. So at frame 64 with the gravity, insert a keyframe with the I key at negative nine. Go ahead one frame, put the value to positive two and insert a keyframe. So now if we play it, it will go like that. Sweet hovering rocks. Go ahead and go to a place where you want the rocks to shoot forward. Add a wind force field. Rotate that so that it faces the rocks. And then going to the physics tab, we're gonna put the strength to zero, insert a keyframe, go ahead one frame, and put the strength to 50,000 and insert a keyframe with the I key there. All right, now if we play this, you will see that the rocks go up because there's no gravity and then boom, but that's way too fast. So we're gonna go ahead and add in a plane, scale it up and make a wall so that our rocks don't go flying into infinity and beyond. Make that passive rigid body object. And boom, still we have some issues. So we're going to go to right where the rocks are about to hit the wall and then select the force field, insert a keyframe at 50,000, go ahead one frame and then put the force field strength to zero. So right before it hits the wall, it goes back down to zero. And now we'll see what we got and it's still a little crazy. So we're going to select the rocks and put the mass to six kilograms. And this will help a little bit so that they're a little bit heavier. And then apply the scale to all the rocks as well. We're also going to change all of them to mesh. Select both of them. Select the third one. And select copy to active to copy the rigid body physics. And there we go. Our earth bending is having a little bit of a seizure though. So select the wall and go to surface response and put the friction all the way down. Now with the friction all the way down it plays a lot better. But the gravity is still affecting it. So go to right where the rocks hit the wall. We're going to go back to the gravity settings, insert a keyframe at 2, go forward one frame and put the gravity back to negative 9.8 and insert a keyframe. And now with all of these keyframes inserted, look at that, some beautiful earth rock bending. Alright, now for the next part of the earth bending, we're going to select the plane, go into edit mode, and then we're going to make sure to save first because this can crash sometimes. So make sure to save, go into edit mode, right click, subdivide a couple times to about there. And now we're going to go to the data right here. We're going to go to shape keys. And right after the rocks hit, we're going to add in a new shape key. Let's just see where we want it. Right about there. Add in a new shape key. Add in a second one. Put the value all the way to 1. And then go into edit mode. Go to proportional editing and change it to constant. And select a vertex with proportional editing on. Hit G, Z, and bring it up. Then hit G, Z, and bring it up and scale down your circle. And G, Z, and bring it up again and scale down your circle. And you can see by changing this value, we could animate that. So go to this frame right here. Insert a keyframe at value of 0. Go forward a little bit. Change it to a value of 1 and insert a keyframe. Add a new shape key. Put it to a value of 1. And now we're going to change the falloff to random. Hit G with one vertex and bring it up. And now we got some spiky rock bending right there. How cool is that? We're going to insert a keyframe at value of 0. Go forward a little bit. Insert a keyframe at value of 1. Let's do that one more time. Put it to a value of 1. Grab another vertex. Bring it up. And we are getting some jagged rock bending right there. Sweet. Super cool. All right. Now for the last one, what we want to do. And we can see what we got here. Super cool. The last one we want to do is the actual rock. Let's make sure to save this. And this is going to be the meteorite type rock. We're going to go to the physics tab as well. And with this, we're going to add in a icosphere. Bring it, scale it up, add in a subdivision surface modifier, and apply that. 
scale it up, and with proportional editing set to smooth, go ahead and give it some kind of random shape for your big Bring it over to the left, hit Ctrl A, apply the scale. Now we're going to go to the physics tab, add in a dynamic paint, change it to brush, and add a brush. On the plane, we're going to add a dynamic paint as well, change it to canvas, add canvas, and we're going to change the surface type from paint to displace. Now the rock is going to basically displace the plane, sweet. So now going to this frame, let's bring it down on the Z axis, hit I, and we're going to insert a location keyframe right about here. I location, go forward a couple frames, hit G, Z, I location, go forward another couple frames, and bring it on the X axis, insert another location keyframe. In the side view, three on the numpad, we're going to go forward and hit G, and bring it forward and down to about there, insert another location keyframe, and then the last one, bring it forward like so, and you guessed it, insert a location keyframe. Now let's see some awesome rock earth bending that we have. Boom, those, we got that, spiky, jaggy, and that. Sweet. Go ahead and save this because crashing is no bueno. Now what we want is little rock particles to fall from this. Go to the particle settings, we're going to add a new particle system. Shift A, add in an icosphere, and we're going to give this a little bit of a random shape once again. Alright, now in the particle settings, we're going to go ahead and go to particle settings, go to render, change it to object, and select that icosphere that we just created. And then we're going to increase the scale, increase the random scale quite a bit as well. And what we want to do is go to the frame where it's right about to rise up, put the start frame to 171. And then we're going to put the end frame, which is the frame where it rises all the way up, 178. Increase the lifetime to infinity and beyond, and the number we could leave to 1000. So now we got that. However, we want to go ahead and make it emit only from the bottom faces. So go to the vertex group, add in a new group, select this vertex right here, hit Control plus to increase the selection, and then click Assign. Go back to the particle system, go to the vertex groups, and under density, select that group. And so now it's only emitting from those bottom faces. We're also going to select rotation, increase randomize, phase, and random phase quite a bit. All right, now let's see what we got. Sweet. However, you can see that our initial rocks have a little bit of an issue, and this is a little bit of a glitch, which we'll take a look at in just a second. But for now, select this original icosphere, or this icosphere that we added for the pebbles. Select rigid body, and we're going to leave it to active. Now select the plane, and we're going to make it also a collision under the physics tab. And we want the little pebbles to stick to it. So under collision, we're going to increase the damping and the friction all the way up. Now you will see that the little pebbles stick to the plane. However, they're sliding down a little bit too slowly. So we're going to decrease the friction to something like 0.2. And now you can see it looks a lot better. All right, cool. Let's move this pebble out of the way because we don't need it. And now we're going to try to fix these initial rocks which are going completely haywire. One thing we could try is selecting the plane and changing it from convex hull to mesh. However, you can see that that doesn't really do much. So what I'm going to do is hit Control A, apply the scale, and now you can see that they fall through. Now, this is not what we want either. I'm also going to change it back to convex hull, but still it's not working. So one thing I'm going to try is changing it back to mesh. Add in an icosphere, and you can see with a new icosphere, changing it to rigid body, that icosphere works for some reason. So I'm just going to remake these rocks. It seems to be a glitch in Blender. I'm not exactly sure what's happening. It's probably because of all the different things we've added. I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier, apply it, same thing we did, and added rigid body. And now you can see that that, uh, that new one that we made works. Deleting the old three, I'm going to create this one, shift D and copy it, and basically just remake it. Again, it seems to be a glitch in Blender. So if you're experiencing some kind of glitches, and you can see adding a third rock, they now fall through the floor. So I'm going to hit Control-Z to undo, shape it, and uh, copy it again. And for some reason, it now works, even though before it didn't. Again, now another thing that could work is actually baking the rigid body physics, which we do at the end of this tutorial. But I want to show you another workaround as well. All right, for now, let's select the rocks and change them to 6 kilograms each. And now... Let's play this and see what we got. Boom! Sweet! Alright, now we need to add in some textures to this. Going over to textures.com, we're going to search for rock. Not the rock, but rock. We're going to be using this texture right here. This one right here. Download the albedo, the roughness map, and the normal map. Once you've done that, go back into Blender. We're going to go ahead and select the plane. Go to the Material tab, we're going to split the viewport, 
add a new material, change this window to Shader Editor, and then go to Edit Preferences, search for Node Wrangler add-on, and make sure it's enabled. Then just hit Control shift t to enable Node Wrangler, go to where your textures are, and select all three of those, and click on Add. And boom, it does it automatically for you. Now go into the material view. We're going to select everything else. Shift select the floor. Control L, copy the materials. Now what we're going to do is unwrap these. We're going to select all three or all four of these rocks. Hit tab to go into edit mode. Use smart UV project and click OK. Change this window to the UV image editor. A to select everything and S to scale it up. Let's do the same thing with the plane in edit mode. A to select everything and S to scale up those UVs. And then change the lamp to a sun lamp with a value of 4. Rotate it how you want. We're going to select the plane, go to the object data, and we're going to deselect show in viewport and show in render. However, before we do that, we could go ahead and shift D, copy it over, and put it on the edges so that we got some side borders. Then deselect show in viewport and show in render for all three of those. If you don't want them to be shown, of course. All right, cool. Let's play this, see what we got. Sweet. Now we got one issue. The particles right there are falling. To fix this, we're going to add in a cube. Then with this cube, we're going to go ahead and hit S, Shift Z to scale it on all the axes except the Z axis. Bring it up to about there. Then go into edit mode, Z to go into wireframe and select the top face. Hit the I key to inset and then E to extrude and bring it down. Then go to the particle settings or the physics settings, sorry and go to collision and we're going to select kill particles. Now when the particles hit that, they will be killed and they won't go through the floor and you won't see them. How cool is that? All right, so we did four different kind of earth bending techniques here. You are now an earth bending master. I approve you. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Also with this initial rock pebble, let's put the same material onto that as well. Under Rigid Body Worlds, let's make sure to click Bake to bake the rigid bodies, which this will help a lot because if you don't bake them, you could have some issues or glitches like we saw before. Also, when you try to render it, it will or may not render it properly. So make sure to bake your rigid body physics. And with that, once again, you are now an earth bending god. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Make sure to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to this channel as I post almost daily uploads, and check out the community over at BlenderMania3.com. Join the community, join the contests. I'll see you in the next video. Ciao for now, au revoir, and also if you have any requests for tutorials, please leave it in the comments down below.